So what are the steps that you need to know uh, for the jack-up rig move operation? The first one, uh, at least you understand the philosophy of the jack-up rig move operation. A fundamental knowledge, reality, existence that you need to aware of. Early preparation for rig move. How early is early? You know, so many people they didn't aware that um, even before a jack-up rig going to one location. The operator like Petronas, Shell, PTTEP, Rock Oil, you know, Conoco Philip, they have done a lot of study on one location before they actually send the rig, the checkup rig over to the particular area. So meaning to say they will carry out a, a geophysics survey over the area and see what is down below and then uh, uh, after that once they know it's suitable, then they will okay, let's go, we, we just go and do a, a soil boring, you know, soil boring and get some soil sample and analyze and then they will find a suitable uh, jack-up for that particular. Now we talk about early preparation, okay, early preparation uh, from operator side and now we come to uh, drilling contractor side. So the drilling contractors will get the uh, information probably two or three weeks before um, from the operator where they will give you the, um, the anchor handling vessel a towing vessel and uh, same time they need to carry out a suitability survey for the proposed vessel and then uh, of course then we will carry out uh, using the geophysics data geotechnical data and submit to uh, marine warranty company if we need to use them to analyze so then the marine warranty will come up with the uh, lake penetration analysis you know and then we work through the procedure and get the location approval a rig mover is going to the rig now okay now i'm on board the rig as a rig mover so what should i do now so these are the things that you need to know up front Huh? Before you just go there, oh, let me command the rig. That's almost impossible. So you need to know, at least these are the fundamental knowledge that you need to know uh, before you execute the job. So we have to wait uh, for the cantilever to skid in first. And at the same time, uh, prior to that, they're doing preparation, uh, rig movers, and sometimes they have a marine warranty survey as well. You know, Then we go on board and we work, look around you know, and we check on the sea fastening. Yeah? So we check on the sea fastening. Um, and uh, any any findings, you no know, anything that not secure properly, uh, we normally will inform the OIM and the Bushmaster up front, so they can cut down a little bit of time, you know, to to save some time uh, for the rig move. So even before they are actually ready you know, for the rig skid in, cantilever skid in, so they have at least like 50 60 percent uh, of the sea fastening is done, you know. So once the cantilever skidded in. Okay, then of course, like for myself, uh, sometimes they say, "Oh, this is the marine warranty job," you know. So if you are a rig mover, you need to involve with every aspect of the rig move. You know, don't don't say, "Oh, this is your job," and this is not my job. You know. So end of the day, um, our mission is to get the rig towed and arrive safely. You know, we talk about safety of people, safety of the asset, you know, environment, etc. Yeah. So. When the cantilever skidded in, okay, you check, then go through one more round, you know, we go to main deck, cantilever deck, we go to rig floor, we go to sack room, mud pit room, you know, everywhere we go, auxiliary room, we go and check all the sea fastening, even the warehouse, I like to go inside the warehouse, normally the warehouse says, ah, it's okay, no problem, just a small, small item. So what I'm telling them is, yeah, warehouse is a small item, no problem. Even drop if there is no major damage on the deck or whatever, but just imagine a box or two boxes of the boat and nut drop and mix together. I don't know how many days it's going to take to segregate them again. So even a catering, you know, don't talk about warehouse, catering, even personal belongings, everything needs to be secure. If the bus master prior to rig move, you have done a good job. Even when the rig mover come on board, 
boom, straight away, we can go, you know, no problem. The problem is sometimes they don't, I'm not say all of them, but sometimes they, sometimes they are a bit busy, they hand over and this and this, so they all look on certain things like uh, cement in the bow, uh, bow tank, you know, sometimes they fully loaded with bentonite, barite, you know, cement full, you know, and then once the race is almost ready, oh man, we are so heavy at the bow, you know, so what are you going to do? You want to put a lot of ballast or preload at the aft, you know, that will make your, your, your floating draft exceed the load line, you see, and you need to consider as well, when you pull the rig, the bow is actually submerged a little bit further, you know, so these are the things that they don't really look into until the last minute where like myself when we go oh it's too heavy man you you can't you can't go you know you need to make sure that you have a very light deck you know not fill up maximum okay you can fill up maximum okay the rig is designed to fill up maximum but the rig is designed in such a way yes you can load up to the maximum video but evenly distributed not just one side at the bow everything is there so then the rig will be not level so then there's, you have hard time then you heard about people complaining oh now i have to dump the cement i have to do this you know i have to dump everything from here and there so then the, the operator side will be not very happy because the earlier stage was not planned properly and they actually overloaded the rig so these are the things that we need to look into yeah so of course this stability condition again they'll be on my future uh, video i will explain to you guys the the characteristics uh, of the jackup how you manage it um, of course sometimes you go to uh, classes oh this is how we do stability you know a gn a gz curve okay fine but this is we talk about operation now now we are actually on board and dealing with the actual stability where you need to know how to deal make sure that we can tow safely okay so that will be on my the other video later on i will explain to you how to manage the rig stability uh, prior to check down okay now okay i need to conduct in a rig move meeting uh, I went to a certain company, different company, they have different way of doing rig movement. Some of them, they take it very lightly. Some of them, they take it very seriously, which is good. I'm not saying lightly, it's not good, and seriously, it's not good, but if at least they covered everything, what they want to say. Uh, for me, um, I, I usually like to have a meeting at least one hour. Oh, too long. So one hour is okay because one hour normally I can go through from the whole entire rig move procedure. Believe me, not all the OIM Bushmaster company men they have fully understood the entire rig move procedure. Okay, so they only read the the place that they like to read, and not read everything. You know. Now we have a pre-job safety meeting. Now pre-job safety meeting meaning we have to go through with the crew and okay from the first step we check down from the air gap you know down to like five five meters air gap you know 15 feet air gap just to connect the mentor non-routine yeah? non-routine uh, operation but it's a routine job for me yeah, it's non-routine job for them so they have a permit jsa then we have meeting okay we connect the boat mentor vessel we check down to zero air gap then go down to two and a half meters draft or three meter draft then we conduct a watertight integrity okay the reason to have watertight integrity test is to make sure that the all the tanks are intact there's no leaking even in the mud pit so some rig you don't need to worry about the mud pit because the mud pit is not designed to have a master dump valve and anything that dump valve on each individual mud pit you know which is good but it's quite hard for them to work during operation because they need to pump up with the mixing pump and all this but some of the rig you really you don't need to worry about the mud pit at all but some of the rig yes you do you need to really go and check the mud pit and you know the, the rig they have uh, nowadays all the big rig they have at least 25 to 30 tanks preload tanks each of them they have a uh, dumb wow you know 
So this thumb valve normally don't work very well. So because these are the valve that very yeah they, they they do pay attention on the valve. It's just that normally these are the valve that actually leaks. You know even there is a check valve below it, they still leak. So water tank integrity you need to make sure everything is checked and no water inside. So then they do it so quickly. Fifteen minutes. Phew, finish. Okay, everything go. We can go. You know. How can you determine a water tight integrity in 15 minutes? This is a bit too short. You need at least one. You see, when you, the rate is in the water, yeah, you need to wait at least 15 or half an hour before the water actually start to fill in into the tank. If there's a leak, then you take something that you can see, okay, show, sure, yeah, there's a water inside the tank, you know. If I see some of the rig that do it so quickly, the, the moment the how touch the water, Two meters, bang! It takes only down, down, down. Finish. Fifteen minutes. What is that? You know. So, after the fifteen minutes, if there's a water coming in, how do you know? You don't know. You see. So, water tight intake is a very crucial part of the rig move. Take some time, please. So you at least to me two hours is just enough. You know, first sounding after half an hour, first sounding, take check everything good. Then the second soundings again for all the tanks. Then you know. Oh. The rig is very good on water tight integrity, you know. Then we check down further, you know. So some some location, you don't need to worry about leg retraction, you know. You can pull and free and go. You see, some of the rig, uh, some of the looks, uh, some of the location are very deep, twenty meters, twenty five meters penetration, you know. So where you need to jet the leg and free the leg before you can actually leave the location, yeah. So. Then okay, if you need to jet the leg, meaning to say you need to connect the jetting line, yeah, the jetting hoses. So these are the steps that you need to know that you need to connect the jetting hoses first, yeah, before you actually go to uh, floating draft and then a little bit of a draft, then you start pull, yeah, pull the leg, right? So okay, again, pulling leg. Normally people would like to say pulling leg, pulling. We pull the leg. We pull the leg. So it's something we call leg retraction. They retract, they retract the legs. So that is after, I mean, after a while like for myself, right? move the rig, pull the rig, you know, retract the rig. So I already have my own method how to deal with uh, those solid sticky clay, you know. And of course, it's subject to the rig energetic system as well. So I have already have my own method to do it, you know, on deep. It cannot be the same on every location. So there's a, some method that you need to know how to retract the legs off the ground, you know, and make sure it's everything safe, not over pull and all this. So so these are the topics that I will talk again later on on my just specific to that on one video, you know, so everybody can understand. Yeah. Okay. So once the leg is free, right? Before the leg is free, of course you need to make sure the mantle get ready in position, you know. The payout, how long you want as a rig mover, normally I think about 150 meters, you know, just put and uh, you know, make sure there is some tension, on, meaning to say I like to them to to bring, to stretch the wire first, you know? then I put like 20% power, depending if if there's a platform behind me, you know, then then I will put more, 25-30%, like then slowly bring up the leg, and depending on the current weather, you need to study the weather first you know, before you move current direction from here and there you know some of the people have to drop the oranges see where is the direction of the so these are the methods that people have been using you know to determine current direction here and there so you have a technology now you can actually call the boat you know the boat can tell you and then you can see the boat drifted ask them to do a drift drift test you know if there's a wind then you ask them to count and then give the actual current direction of course you will have to throw your oranges go away no problem it's up to you. So, so along the way, you will grow uh, your own method. Uh, look at the weather, you know, and before you actually move the rig. So now, okay, now we move up, okay, the the rig safely, and then we we reach on the other side, you know. So again, uh, and today actually, I'm 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 working on procedure on one of the company um, where you can see all the uh, actually. The steps <laughs> so this is I'm going to talk on my next video which is the rigmore procedure 
So, so this these are the steps. Like now, I'm saying that I'm I'm towing. I'm going to the next location. So, so what are the next step that is coming? So the next step is coming is like okay, we're gonna slow down, bring the legs down, you know. And then if there's a platform, then we have to slow down. Probably I have to justify how far away from the platform I need to 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 slack my uh to, to sorry to slow down my rig and then to connect the assist vessel, you know, then turn the rig around and bring the rig to stand off position. Okay, so these are the steps that uh that you can avoid. You cannot avoid as a remove. You must do this job to bring the rig. To the stand off location. Okay, so once the rig is stand off location, um, you run anchors. If there's a platform, you're gonna platform. You run anchors, and then, and then uh, run anchors, and then once you run anchor, you pick up the leg and you move to the platform using the anchors. You know, so and once you reach the platform, pin now or I'm say okay, complement happy. Then you jack down, jack up. Okay, jack up to initial penetration. Uh, see, if you're a new guy, what I'm talking now, you probably don't understand at all. If you work on the rig jack up before, yes, you will know what I'm talking about now. Okay, so normally we like to have a to jack up to get the initial penetration, yeah, where the hull just at the zero egg, meaning just above the water. So that is when you can see your leg penetration, uh, whether it's in line with the analysis that we make, we generated uh, the leg penetration curve. Yeah. Uh, that is when you will know whether the curve is accurate or the soil is not accurate. The, the soil data was given is not accurate. So these are the things that you need to know upfront. Okay. So now you've got initial penetration, then you prepare yeah, your deep bell and everything. Yeah, some of the read they can prepare very fast, you know, upfront, pop, 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 all done, deep bell. And then we start preload. Uh. What is preloading again, if you want to read, you know what's preload. If you don't order it, you don't know what's preload. You see, so you must have a little bit of background on jack up before you can become a rig mover. Yeah, of course, some rig mover they don't have that experience, but they still can be a rig mover. But we call them as tow master because you you can't call yourself as rig mover if you don't know about all these things. Yeah, preloading you don't know, uh, jacking you don't know. You only know how to move the rig. So. So nowadays, people, I'm not saying it's that I'm the rig mover is great, that greater than tow master. No, it's just that I have a little bit exposure than the rest of it. Uh, some of them also have a similar background with me. It's just I have more background to deal with jack up itself. Yeah? Okay, that's fine. Okay, now, now we don't talk about rig mover. Later, I will have another video talk about tow master and rig mover. So, what is the difference between these two? Okay. So now we 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 finish preload. Okay, the next step is we check up the rig, pom 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 pom, to find an agate. Yeah? 